Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for Art Friday. This is when we get to make art together to learn about and celebrate other cultures. For the month of November, we are celebrating South Asian culture. Now, you might have heard of the word Asia, um, and that includes countries like the Philippines where I was born. It includes China, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, uh, Cambodia, Laos, lots of countries in that area. Um, right next to uh, the countries I just mentioned is an area called South Asia. And if we look on this map, you can see that that includes countries like Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, um, Sri Lanka, and other countries. Now, you might be asking, well, why would we study South Asia? Why, why is it important to study this culture? Uh, did you know that Punjabi, which is one of the many languages of South Asia, did you know that Punjabi is the seventh uh, most spoken language in our Highline School District, in our community? So that means that we have a lot of classmates, teachers, staff, neighbors, people in our community who have roots in that region. They may have been born there, or maybe they were born here, but have relatives uh, who are from uh, South Asia. So it's just a good idea to learn more about the cultures of our community. One of the most beautiful things that South Asia is known for are its textiles. And textiles are basically woven cloth. They are um, made from cotton or silk and they weave them together, sometimes by hand, sometimes by machine, to make these really long, beautiful pieces of cloth that then are cut down to uh, make clothing, like this shirt, for example. One of the things that I really admire about uh, South Asian textiles is uh, the different techniques used to make such beautiful cloth. Sometimes the different colors are incorporated into the design through weaving. Sometimes it's done through dyeing. So for example, uh, they might dip the cloth into a dye or ink that gets only part of it colored that way. One other way that they get a design onto the fabric is through a technique called block printing. So if we look at this picture here, we can see an example of a person uh, stamping basically a uh, long piece of fabric. So for our Art Friday activity, we're gonna take some inspiration from block printing of South Asian textiles. We're gonna keep in mind a few ideas. One of the things that is really important in South Asian textile design is color and contrast. Contrast is uh, basically anything that's opposite each other. An example of uh, contrasting colors might be yellow, which is super bright, and black, which is dark, okay? Our hornet colors. So we'll keep that in mind. We'll keep contrasting colors in mind in our design. And we'll also um, think about pattern or repetition. Pattern is basically a, thing, a sequence of things that repeat. So think about the pattern you wanna make with your design. Now, some of you might remember from last year that we did something very similar to decorate our library. Remember when you used all those recycled materials to stamp either in silver or gold onto these hexagons? And then Miss Pina and I later hung up all your beautiful artwork around uh, the library. So this is kind of similar. This should seem familiar to you if you were at school last year, but if not, I'll make sure to give you some step-by-step -step guidance. Let's get started. So 
since we're going to be working with paint, uh, it'll be a good idea to put down either a grocery a paper bag or uh, some newspaper as your workspace so that uh, in case you have any spills, uh, it's not going to get on the furniture because uh, it might be uh, a little hard to get out. Um, you also might want to uh, push up your sleeves if you have uh, long sleeves on. Uh, we just want to make sure we're trying to make as little mess as possible. Get your art kit. And then a couple of other things that aren't in the art kit but uh, you might also have at home are a clean sponge. Ask, if you're, um, ask an adult if you could use one of the sponges in the kitchen. Just make sure it's clean. Um, you will also need some scissors. Uh, you probably already have glue stick at home. You might want to use the caps for it. Here's another one. This is actually a screw from a shelf. Just make sure that it's not needed to keep something up. This was an extra one that I found. So I'll have that handy. So what we want to do is take inspiration from block printing um, that the South Asian uh, textile designers use. And block printing is basically when you take a piece of wood and carve away at it so that you come up with this design that is raised above the rest of the surface. And when you dip it into ink, the ink only will show on this raised surface and then you can use it like a stamp on cloth. Now, um, carving into wood is really hard, really, really difficult. You need special tools for it. And I think because I'm only showing you this through a video and I'm not with you, I wanted to make sure we come up with a different technique that will get a similar result, but uh, will be safer. So what we're gonna do is called collagraph printing. And that's when you actually add to the surface to raise it up instead of carving away. So I made this uh, just out of rubber bands uh, and glue, and that's included in your um, art kit. So what I'd like you to do first is take out your materials. Uh, you'll have two pieces of cloth, a bright, uh, light colored one and a dark one. We're not gonna use that yet. That will be the last thing that you use. Uh, because this is your final product. We're gonna do our practice on these other papers. Now, if you have worked with me before, you know that I like to give my students a chance to practice first so that they can get some ideas down before they go for the final design. You'll have some papers, and then you have this cardboard. Now, You'll want to cut this down a little bit um, so that you can have a smaller space for your design. And I'm just going to make a small rectangle piece. Maybe I'll do a leaf since it's fall. I'm going to use my glue to draw a leaf. And then I'm going to put the cap back on so the glue doesn't dry out. Now I'm going to take my rubber band and I'm going to cut it so that I can press it down onto the line that I just made with my glue. So it'll get a little bit messy. So I cut off that extra piece. Now I'm just going to set this aside to dry. And because I used all that glue, it might take a little while, but that's okay. And in the meantime, what I will do is check out how these colors look with these papers. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in South Asian textile design, color and contrast is really important. And what you'll do is take one of the corks and uh, you'll test out each color on each color paper. 
What I want you to remember is when, when you change colors, it's important to change uh, corks or the end of a cork so you're not mixing and getting the uh, paints all mixed up in, in their color. So I'm gonna um, dip first the purple and I will see how it looks against green. So let's line these up. That looks pretty good against green. It really comes out against the orange, but on the black, it's really hard to see. So purple, since I got a black cloth and a white piece of cloth, maybe I'll reserve the purple just for the lighter piece of cloth. Cover this so the paint doesn't dry. Now I'm gonna try the yellow and I'm just gonna use the other end, uh, end of the cork. Oh wow, it really comes out against the black. That means that it's high contrast. Uh, yellow is a light color, light bright color against the black paper. Uh, contrast means opposites, right? So if you have something really light against something dark, it's uh, bound to show up better. If you have something that's a little bit closer, like yellow and orange, it doesn't have as high a contrast, but it might still look nice to you, so you could still do that. So you should have another cork in your uh, kit, um, so you can test out the blue and Uh, it comes out really well on the orange. It's nice and bright. Um, because the, the paper is bright, the darkness of the blue really shows. Uh, the blue and the green uh, is a little more subtle. And if you didn't know, um, what two colors make green? Blue and yellow actually make green, so that's why they're, they feel kind of close to each other in shade. And the blue, because this particular blue is kind of bright, it actually shows up okay against the black. So since you have more cardboard uh, and more rubber bands, you can do some more designs. Um, it's good to take care of this now so that you can give um, the glue a chance to dry. It's really important uh, not to work with it when it's wet because the glue will just mix with the paint and it'll just be a big icky mess. Um, so what you'll do with the sponge um, is cut it down. And since we have three colors, I want to have three sponges uh, so that I have a sponge for each color. And sometimes it can be hard to cut sponges, so you might need to ask an adult for some help. And then uh, in your packet, in your kit, you should have some craft sticks. Um, I am just using some plastic knives that I have at home. So what you'll do is with the craft stick is take a little bit of the paint, and we're using acrylic paint um, we're just gonna spread it on sort of like we're spreading butter. Okay, we just want a nice thin layer. You don't want it all goopy. Okay, so I'm gonna just try how this looks with the purple. And let's see here. I'm gonna take my collagraph, since it's all dry, I'm gonna get some ink on it. Then I'm gonna put it down on my paper. And you guys might remember this from when we did it at library. I'm gonna rub it. I'm actually using the glue stick, but it has the cap on it. I'm using it to rub my collagraph onto the paper. And hopefully the camera wasn't shaking too much. Then I'm gonna peel it off. Okay. Looks like I, it got the shapes of the cut rubber band here. 
and then it got some a little extra paint. That's all right. I actually found these two designs on my plastic utensil, so I'm going to see if I can get a design off of this. So I'm going to put yellow onto my sponge. All right, let's see how this works. I don't know. So I'm going to press down, see if it grabs hold. So I got some of the paint on, and now I'm going to try it on the black paper. And then I'm going to peel it off. It looks like only the outside showed up, but that's okay. So really just experiment on um, the paper until you figure out which shapes. Oh, I kind of like the way that turned out, but I think maybe I'll go in this direction. Until you figure out which ones that you want to create a design for uh, your cloth. So for the white piece of cloth, I'm just going to use the dark colors because when I tested the colors out on this paper, I was noticing that the yellow doesn't show up all that well, and I don't think it's gonna show up all that well on the white piece of cloth either. So I'm just gonna use my purple and blue for this one. So when it's your chance to do this, um, I want you to think, start off on the edge and then work your way towards the middle. See how this purple kind of made a mess in the middle? I'm just going to work with that and put one more dot right there. Yeah, kind of hides it a little bit. So a pattern is a sequence. Uh, in this case, I have a pattern that ma is made out of four purple dots on the corners and then this um, shape that I'm getting from the knife, uh, the knife handle um, in between. Okay. So there's my first design on the dark, um, uh, dark using dark colors on a light piece of cloth. And then for this one, I think the, since I tested it out on paper, I know that the yellow is going to sh uh, show up really nicely uh, on the black. And I think I might try some blue as well. Okay, um, I think I actually really like how those splatters showed up. That looks pretty cool. I'm gonna cover, I think because it looks um, really interesting to me, I'm just gonna keep going um, all the way and cover my whole cloth with that one. Because that actually looks really neat with all those little bubbly marks. So the thing with art is you can change your mind as you go. Even though I had an idea in my head um, when it was when I make what might be thought of as a mistake, I can look at it and say, oh that actually looks really interesting. I'm gonna work with that. Ooh, 
super excited by it. I'm really happy with the way this one's turning out and it was such a surprise. Okay, so I made a pattern. I had the same thing repeating and I've got some contrast with the yellow against the black, the bright color against the dark color. Now I'm going to add blue. All right, there we go. So it's going to take a little while for this to dry, but I really like the way this one turned out. Um, and where'd the other one go? Okay, so here are two finished pieces. And then to clean up, Anything that you can that you plan on reusing, you can uh, wash out with soapy water. Uh, so I'm going to wash these out, um, and same thing with the sponges. Uh, rinse it with warm water, and then uh, give it a chance to dry. You probably want to just keep using these sponges for art projects. Don't use them for uh, food or washing dishes anymore. Just use them for art projects. Um, and with the corks. You can probably reuse that too so see how much of the paint that you can get off and let it dry and store it in a dry place now with these paints you probably have enough to do another project so these are acrylic um, and just remember to practice with it first before um, going on to something more permanent like cloth so thanks for watching the video. Now it's your turn to try this at home. Now remember, set up your space so that you have uh, newspapers or maybe grocery bags on a table to help protect the table. Um, get all your materials in your art kit ready. And then practice first, okay? Practice on the small pieces of paper from your art kit. Um, just to make sure you get the hang of it. And then you, when you feel comfortable in that and when you have a design in mind, then you can go for your final version. Remember in your final version, your final design, to think about contrasting colors, pattern, what uh, shapes, um, what series of shapes are you gonna do? And you have a choice. You can either just do it on the edges as a border, or you can maybe have a, a little bit of the design repeated in the middle. Just make sure that you think it through and that it looks uh, intentional, that you've really considered how you want to design it for your final piece. And I hope you'll stop by at Art Studio Time uh, on Zoom with your class so you can show your beautiful artwork to each other and to me. I'd love to see it. All right, thanks.